Hi guys, it's Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network and I am dedicating this video to Lady Joy. She asked me if I would show you all how to render ghee. I want to talk a little bit about butter before I do show you actually how to do this and why quality of butter and I want to talk about pots and pans and heat and things that are really essential uh, before we get started, so come. I'm going to be submitting um, snippets of videos uh, at the end. I call them fails. And uh, the reason being is because this is typically, although non-salted, this is typically the butter that I use because it's grass-fed. Uh, non-salted organic meadow grass-fed butter. This is salted. I like to eat this on just uh, for eating not for making ghee. The other day I went out and bought this one which is non-salted and I asked the guy why it doesn't have this label. He doesn't know so I have to contact Organic Meadow. It could be that um, at the time that they made this the cows were out pasturing but because they weren't when they made this they don't have it I don't know this actually says it's made from grass-fed cows on here they don't say it so I don't want to use this because I like to make my ghee from grass-fed butter this is another one that I typically use rolling meadow um, unsalted again and again from grass-fed I usually have pretty good success with these two butters I bought this butter the other day and tried it and it was a fail and I absolutely love this butter to eat but and again it's grass fed and this is organic but I don't know it doesn't say anywhere if it's grass fed or not uh, these two butters are in my opinion are far too good quality to make ghee and that's not to say that these are inferior because obviously you know milk that comes from the cow is determined largely by the soil that produces the grass that the cows eat and the health of the cow the age of the cow there's so many variables that go into it and so it could have even been been that and I use two of these because um, I failed and then I tried again and failed again. Uh, it could even be that just this particular stick of butter, you know, maybe I got two sticks of butter out of a hundred thousand that were far too sensitive to make um, ghee with. So butter is a funny thing. Now here's the other thing. Is your pan triple plate stainless steel. When I made this particular one, I used my triple stainless steel pot. I usually use this pot, which is single. At least I think it is. And I typically use medium heat and it burnt this. I'm talking it burnt it. I mean, I couldn't even feed it to the well, I'm going to try to feed it to the wolves or the wild animals in the uh, forest, but my cats won't eat it, I'll tell you that. So if my cats turn their nose up at it, I know that probably most wild animals will. So it was rendered useless. Um, so high heat, sorry, medium to low heat was too high for this, as was a triple stainless steel bottom. So like I said, normally I use this pot, which looks like it could be single, because usually it says triple, right, on the bottom. And I usually have it at three. When I made this one, I had it at one. And here's the thing, guys, even in this pot, it burnt this butter. So that tells me, and if, when I open this, it is such a pale, pale yellow. The paler the yellow, the more uh, fresher the cream. So there's no food coloring additives or any, and they say that, right? No food color additives or anything. This one does not contain artificial color. That's the Organic Meadows. 
and this one does not say but usually like I said this one is also a pale yellow and I typically get really good results from that so I'm going to show you some snippets of those veils at the end but I would just kind of wanted to let you know in advance that they're going to be there and how important butter and heat and the utensil that you the pot that you're making your ghee that you're rendering your ghee is very important so starting with this butter I have my heat on one I've cut my butter now here's the thing once you start this process you cannot leave so don't begin unless you know that you're committed to the end and this takes about about 16 minutes between 14 and 16 minutes depending but usually about 16 minutes I have a pound of butter in here just so that you know and I like to do a pound at a time uh, I when I was making this I was only using a half a pound and I think that was also part of the issue because typically you want to stir the, the top and I didn't have sufficient butter in my pot and I noticed that I was scraping the bottom a lot a lot of variables that may have contributed to the fails. Just as an FYI guys, I normally um, am interrupted in my daily creating of videos at least a minimum of three or four times. Some days it's 10 or 12 times. My cell phone, the courier, um, somebody coming to the door, cats, um, garbage trucks, I mean you name it, there's just so many different interruptions that happen through the day. I normally edit all that out uh, and I think that's another reason why I might have failed on this because I had so many interruptions that day and I refused to leave the pot but energy is energy and okay so just to let you know that is what we want usually in the first eight minutes is for a foam to happen and then that will subside and I have this on one heat one which is the lowest heat uh, yeah so going back I, I energy is energy so if I was feeling frustrated that day you know how you probably heard um, when somebody really is full of love and and they're creating a meal all that love goes into the meal and it makes the meal taste so much better there's actually energetic truth to that um, so you know on that note I was a little bit frustrated that day because I was trying to do five projects simultaneously in other words I was trying to film five projects simultaneously because I was working on five sites project simultaneously and I had about 10 or 12 interruptions that day so you know that as well on top of butter on top of heat on top of utensils there's just so many variables I just wanted to throw that out there I think it's important to know sometimes failure isn't just the product or time or heat sometimes it really is at an energetic level that said I really don't know exactly if it was just one or a combination of everything we're about halfway into it and you want to start stirring at the top more of the surface as opposed to touching the bottom of the pot I still have a jar of ghee in the fridge so that's why I'm only making a pound right now because I already have about a pound in the fridge you don't need to keep ghee in the fridge ghee um, that's the whole point of rendering butter into ghee is that it can go from a solid to a liquid just like coconut oil and be very shelf stable and not go bad and it lasts for years I just personally 
I don't know, it's a habit. I keep my all of my bacon fat, duck fat, chicken fat, beef fat, all of that stuff in the freezer and or in the fridge, including my ghee. But you know, that's also part of why we render it because butter left on the counter or in the even kept in the fridge will go bad after a certain while. So by rendering it, you extend the life of it um, and it doesn't go bad. So this was the other thing. I'm being shown that my battery is dying. Uh, that was another factor that I had going on the other day when I was making the ghee. So that means I actually have to leave my butter now, and I don't want to do that, to go get a new battery. Oh, let's hope this works out, guys. The nice thing is that it doesn't take me long to change the battery pack, so that's a positive. I'm oh, sorry. So we're definitely halfway into it now. We've been a good probably five or six minutes. And we're not even near. That's why I turned up the heat to one and a half, if in case I haven't told you. I want to get a steady boil because um, we're not even near where we need to be for this to be halfway done. So ideally what should be happening is this should be starting to get clearer and it should beginning to get, uh, it should turn very dark yellow but uh, almost see-through. Um, and I, what I'm seeing right now is that it's beginning to but it's a slower process and so I'm not going to turn the heat up just so that I can stay within the 16 minute range. I'm going to keep the heat at one and a half and just allow for however long this is going to take to do that because I would much rather have success and take longer than turn up the heat and have a failure by burning my butter. So even that guys, 16 minutes is a guideline. Usually it works for me, but eventually this will begin to smell the, the darker yellow it gets and the clearer it gets. Um, it'll begin to smell like that popcorn butter that you smell at the theaters. And it's starting to. Mmm, popcorn. Gosh, who's who on a ketogenic diet have recently has eaten popcorn or even in the last six to nine months? <laughs> oh my gosh, I used to love popcorn. Okay, this is starting to look good. This is starting to look less uh, milky creamy and more of that dark yellow. We're way past the time that they claim. But that's because I turned the heat down because I absolutely do not want to burn this. So you know, maybe the fail was really a success because you don't need 16 minutes in medium heat to make ghee you can go lower heat, ensure that you have greater success, but it'll take you more time. Kind of like late bloomers, right? My ghee is being a late bloomer. It's going a little slower, a little less heat, but it's going to have a ensured success at the end. Now that's turning out lovely. See how that's almost like beautiful golden? That's why they called it liquid gold. And that stuff on the bottom, that those little white things, that's the fat globules. And ideally, the reason why you don't want to uh, stir the bottom is you want those fat globules to char ever so slightly on the bottom because what happens when they char, they caramelize, and it's like candy. You know, if you've watched any of my how to render beef fat or make chicken bacon from uh, chicken fat and skin and from duck fat and skin, it's a similar concept. Um, the milk fat 
uh, ends up being like this delicious, I'm not going to say candy, but it's because it's even better than that. Um, but just this delicious food. So you don't want to stir that up. You want that process to happen. And that's why we stir closer to the top or from the middle up. Oh, it has that beautiful popcorn, theater popcorn smell now. Now, it's typically supposed to get a second foam, and I think that's what all this bubble is right now. This is our second foam. And then usually they say after about a couple minutes, after this dissipates, it's usually done. You know, it's interesting, guys. I create videos on fasting, and in my videos I tell people, from day to day your fast is different because you're different. There's so much happening to your body at a vibratory level that everything about you begins to shift. And, you know, this principle is holding true for making ghee. Even what I've noticed it when making ferments. You know, I can create the exact same recipe, uh, fermented car carrot recipe, one week to the next and end up with completely different results. And it's not because I've done anything wrong. It's just because there's, you know, this is why I was saying about energy. Energy is everything. And it's something that we don't take into consideration enough, especially when it comes to food. And food preparation, growing food, harvesting food, processing food, preparing food, even eating it. Your energy largely determines how you assimilate and digest food even. You know, it's not just a matter of having health issues. It's your health issue is a result of an energy issue. More often than not, I believe that is done. So we're going to take it off. So just take a colander and line it with cheesecloth and then pour the ghee through the cheesecloth. Oh, that looks so yummy. And I'll show you all those little... See that? That's all the caramelized. Mm -mm. So let's put that there. And, yep, that's good. Mmm, very good. And then you want to get a sterilized glass jar, so we'll go get one of those. Okay, so now, this looks good. And all we want to do is... Pour this into a sterilized glass jar. That is beautiful. That turned out wonderfully. So there, my success took three tries. And it took much lower heat. It took a lot of time. More than 16 minutes, but it was well worth the effort. Now you can just leave this out to cool and you can leave it out, period, in your cupboard or you can store it in your cupboard or your fridge, whichever you prefer. So now I'm going to go back to this. Alright guys, you don't want to burn this. I think I have. Oh, pooey. I guess there had to be another fail somewhere, right? Typically how I like to eat this. is with a bit of salt, because it's not salted, right? I did say that, right? Your ghee can, the butter should not be salted. If you're going to add any salt, you add it afterwards. So here I have some 
pink the Himalayan salt. I know I'm crazy. I love pure fat. And I will just, I can dip that. I can dip bread into that, keto bread if you want. Drizzle it over keto bread. Mm, drizzle it over some meat. But I like to eat it just like this. Of course, that's far too much for me to eat right now, but coming back to ghee for a minute. Um, this is just plain ghee. What else can you do with this? So anytime you make a recipe, try to get in the habit before you make the recipe, during or even after, or throughout the entire process. Ask yourself, what else is possible with this? It's going to give you a creative spark somewhere. It might not happen right then and there, but the more you keep asking that question, the more you're going to open yourself up to creative ideas. So what else is possible with this ghee? Um, I could put turmeric powder in this if I wanted to and a little bit of black pepper and salt. It depends on what I'm going to do with this ghee too. So that's you need to know what you're going to do with the ghee. If you're just going to use it for obviously bulletproof coffee, uh, you might not want black pepper in it, but you might want some, a little bit of turmeric. The thing with turmeric, as you probably all know by watching my other videos, is you need a little bit of black pepper in order for the turmeric to be um, assimilated by the body. You can combine this with coconut oil and do a blend, if, especially if you're going to use it for frying. And so what else is possible? Get creative, guys. So Lady Joy, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. I hope it was okay, it met to your satisfaction. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy the fails. They'll be coming up right after this. And uh, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed creating it. So until I see you in the next video, ciao for now. So the butter has melted and at this point you just need to constantly stir. The idea is medium heat. Whatever that is for your stove, um, this little burner gets really hot, even at three, so I'm going to have to play with this heat. Move it from two to three, back and forth. You'll see the foam. At this point, set your timer for eight minutes and just keep stirring. What will happen is this will foam up a lot. The butter will get very cloudy. You see that heat's way too hot, I can already tell. So just lift it off the burner. So something just happened, my um, battery died in my camera so I had to change it. These batteries are supposed to last a lot longer than what they do. but So I had to take this off and put it on the cast iron trivet. and. Um, the boil went down, didn't dissipate completely, but so it'll be interesting to see because you know you're supposed to keep it on on medium heat constantly. This first time this happens, so we'll see if it ends up in the same result or not. Now that the bubbles are gone, you can see that it's quite cloudy. We're about halfway, four minutes in. And you can see that it's starting to change color already. So you can see that it's turning um, very clear on the top. We are approximately six minutes into it. So do you see the settling on the bottom there? This will get another foam on the top. It's becoming very clear, which is exactly what we want. It smells like popcorn butter. So at this point, this is where you definitely want to surface stir if you want that caramel fat globule to stick to the pan afterwards. It's such a yummy treat. So 
I'm going to pull this up a bit because I can already see that it's stir. I don't want the butter to burn. This is my first time working with this pot. I have lots of stainless steel pots and I have certain ones that I favor and I decided to use this one today. So because it's triple bottom, triple stainless steel bottom, that might be um, the reason why I have that burnt on the bottom. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Um, so per because it holds in the heat, right? So knowing that guys, if this is a fail, we'll do another one, but if this is a fail, then that means instead of medium heat, your heat needs to be less. So if you're working with a, this is interesting because I've, in all the information that I've ever, I have ever uh, read or watched, people don't talk about the different um, pots that you make it in. They don't talk about triple stainless steel on the bottom. Just put your butter in, and that's what I did. I have pots that don't have triple stain, um, sorry, triple stainless steel on the bottom. And those are the ones that I usually use. But like I said, today I decided to use this one. Very different result. My butter no longer looks golden. It looks burnt. Not sure I'm happy with this. Okay, guys, so I can already tell this is an absolute fail. And because of that, mm, I think I'm just going to stop it right now. We've only been about 12 minutes into it. It could be that the pot, and that's why I'm going to try a different pot. The pot is too, um, like I said, triple stain. It's too hot. Um, it could just be that the, the butter is so good that it's so heat sensitive. That's also possible. Uh, but we will stop this, and I will render another uh, half pound using a single stainless steel bottom and I know because that's the one that I've used it yields very different results so so this is the pot that I usually use and as you can see it has a ridge but it's not triple and you know grass-fed butter is not cheap guys so um, a little disappointed with that I'm going to keep the heat down to about three and we're going to try this again. At this point the butter is just about completely melted. I want to start timing eight minutes so we're at 11.30, let's say 11.40 by the time this so it's only 15 seconds, 11.40, because this little bit of butter is still melting. We're going to time it 8 minutes, and we're just going to constantly stir. And I have the heat at medium. And you will see the difference between a triple bottom and a single bottom steel plated pan, and how that will change the making of your ghee, and obviously the need to adjust heat. So we're still waiting for that nice foam to come up. It's only been three minutes. Waiting for the foam, and that's a nice boil. See, that's not overly boiling. The other one, you, the other pot, um, was definitely a harder boil. So this is just a nice light boil. You can tell by the bubbles. We are at this point six minutes in and you can see that it's beginning to change. It's looking more golden, not quite that popcorn-y, buttery taste, almost, but not quite, and it's becoming more clear. So we're looking for a second foaming to happen at some point. And this will just continue to get more and more golden and clear. And that is exactly what we're after. Okay, we're eight minutes in. We're halfway there. That looks so much better. So you're seeing that little bit of brown on the side, right? 
I don't know if you can, but it's, um, that means I need to turn it down. I'm going to lift it up from the heat a bit. Oh, Lord have mercy, if I burn this one, I'll be so disappointed. Let's see, we're getting our second foam now. This is not promising either, guys, because we're only 13 minutes in. We still have a foam, and that is way too brown for my liking. So I have just kind of concluded that this is just far too good a butter to make into ghee. 